What is up, players? It's War Boss Tay up in this mud. Today we're doing a unbooking review. Tales of Heresy is an anthology of stories edited by Nick Kaim and Lindsay Priestley. Rick Priestley? Hmm. It's the tenth book in the Horse Heresy series and is a collection of seven short stories written by some of the authors in the series. I think it's really cool because it's the first time we see some recurring characters and we see the authors expanding a little bit on the stories and the characters that they kind of had a little bit of experience with in writing. Not all of them, some of them branch out in different directions, but um, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty cool. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, turn this off now. I'm going to talk a little bit about each chapter. First one, Blood Games by Dan Abnett. It's a story about the Adeptus Custodes who are the like the bodyguards of the Emperor. And oh boy, man, if you Google search Adeptus Custodes, you will find some pretty awesome figures out there. Dave Taylor, one of my big inspirations, made this army like years ago of Adeptus Custodes characters. They've got the gold armor with the red and the white trim and highlights. It's fantastic with the high elf heads with the little tassels on it. Really, really great story. I had a good time reading it. And uh, really specifically, though, the first part of the story, had, it tells this tale of this Adeptus Custodes member named Amon, or Amon, A-M-O-N. And he starts to pop up here and there. Oh, sorry, my phone's going off. He starts to pop up here and there later in the series of Horace Heresy novels. He makes a couple of appearances, as well as Constantine Valdor, the kind of the head of the Adeptus Custodes, so that's a pretty cool one. Second one is called Wolf at the Door, features pre-heresy space wolves, specifically the 13th Legion, or the 13th chapter, I guess, which is, I don't remember what they call it, Brotherhood, 13th, 13th Company, that's it, 13th Company, the Wolfen. So uh, for those of you who know space wolf lore, you know that they eventually have some bad stuff that happens to them, uh, but in this chapter, or in this story, we see them as they are trying to bring a world into compliance. Oh, this must be Lehman Russ. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool story. It's got a nice little twist at the end. Uh, it's all about, you know, the, the lengths that this honorable company captain is, is going to go through for in order to get a world to become compliant and then... Um, he has to fight off some dark Eldar, and in the end, the uh, humans that he rescues and saves, uh, they they do not want to be compliant. All this time he thought he was helping them out, and turns out they prefer their independence. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice, sad, kind of poignant ending, and I, I like it a lot. So Space Wolves, Wolves, Wolf at the Door, good story. Next is called Scions of the Storm, and it deals with Lorgar, the Urizen, the Primarch of the Word Bearers. And this guy is, this will clear up, this picture will clear up, he is known as the most faithful. He's also known as the guy that kind of um, becomes the first Primarch to really fall to chaos. And the story is pretty pretty tragic in that it's uh, the beginning of it opens up as the word bearers are going to this planet to bring it into compliance and if I can read a little bit of it it's uh, really really kind of sad how how they started out and how they kind of end up so if I can find it they're going to this planet to bring it into compliance and um, the main character, Sor Talgron, is kind of uh, unsure what's going on because they get the order to kind of obliterate the planet or bring them into compliance through force. And uh, he doesn't know why they need to do that since they appear initially compliant. But this first page, this paragraph, is just so appropriate, so I'm going to read it to you now. Officially, the expanding Imperium of Man was a secular one promoting and expounding the truths of science and reason over the falsehoods of religion and spiritualism. The 17th Legion, however, understood the truth, though it was, at times, a heavy burden to bear. Sor Talgron knew that the time was drawing near 
when the acknowledgement of the emperor's divinity would be universally embraced. Faith would become the greatest strength of the imperium, greater than the untold billions of soldiers that constituted the imperial army, greater even than the might of the legions of Astartes. Faith would be the mortar that held all the disparate elements of mankind together. So that's on the first page, and it already kind of shows you the uh, lengths to which these uh, legion, this legion of space marines is uh, completely fanatically devoted to the emperor and to Lord Guard, their primarch. So I thought it was an interesting story. Don't really care for the word bearers. They kind of come off to me as the vanilla bad guys in the series, but it was a pretty good story. Next is a story called The Voice, and it features these lovely ladies, the Sisters of Silence. Their whole thing, their whole fluff is that they don't speak. They communicate through hand gestures and sign language, and they are also psychically null. They do not, they, they create this kind of like black hole, blank space where psychic powers cannot be used. So they're very, very valuable because they're extremely rare. And, well, this is a, I like this conversion. Uh, the story is about how they go to a ship to kind of reestablish contact with a crew of psychic sisters of silence who have kind of lost touch. It, it's very reminiscent of Event Horizon. So if you like that movie, this uh, is a good story for you and it has a great twist at the end. I really, ooh, those twists um, where the main character is this kind of budding sister of silence and she comes to a realization that uh, is really, really good. I'm not going to spoil it. That's one spoiler I don't want to give to you. You got to go read it to check it out. The next story is called... Do, 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 do. Call of the Lion. They didn't really care for it. Gav Thorpe wrote it, and it's all about pre-heresy dark angels and how they go to bring this world into compliance, again, I believe. And the two main characters kind of butt heads. You've got a Terran-born company commander and a company commander that was born on Caliban, and the two of them kind of butt heads. It introduces this one character that reappears later on in Fallen Angels, and, you know, I just didn't really care for it. It didn't really hold my interest. But still, if you're a Dark Angels fan, check it out. It shows some... Th there's some pretty decent storytelling. It just didn't really hold my attention. I couldn't wait to get done with it. Okay, the next one is called The Last Church by Graham McNeil. And Graham McNeil has by now kind of come off to me as this guy who's not afraid to get into the fiction and the background and the fluff and to kind of create his own story with it. And that's from the book he did, Descent of Angels. I just got done reading A Thousand Suns. He takes what's known about the universe and he creates a lot of interesting new dynamics and characters. And this is one that I really particularly enjoyed. A mysterious warrior visits a church and enters into a battle of words with the old priest tending to it. It's called The Last Church because it's the last church on Terra, and the warrior and the old priest kind of talk about divinity, religion, why uh, the warrior says it's good that we're erasing religion and faith, we don't need it anymore, we have science and reason, and the priest says no, we need faith and religion because it gives people something to believe in, it gives people something to hope for, that there is something more to us, and uh, it's just really cool because the emperor plays a huge part in the story. And I'm not going to say any more about that, but great, great story. I think The Last Church is could be the best story in the book for me. I really, really enjoyed it. The last short story is called After Deshaya. And <laughs> it's when the Warhounds Legion, who will soon become known as the World Eaters, they meet Angron, their Primarch, for the first time. Interesting, very interesting. In the beginning, it talks about how Angron is kind of in the cargo hold of the Warhound's ship and every time somebody goes down to talk to him, to welcome him, to say you are our Primarch, we were willing to follow you and we can't wait to learn under you and we uh, we, you know, we're your sons basically we were made with the gene seed that uh, you were that, that, that created you and we are your legion, lead us every time someone goes down, someone in authority goes down to say that, he kills them just almost immediately, he kills the um, head of the whole legion, and then he kills the 
company captains and everyone down the line until finally we get to our good buddy Karn who will become Karn the Betrayer but here he's just a company captain and uh, the two of them get into a little uh, getting to know you bout of words. Really interesting. I thought it was very funny how uh, every time, like for no reason, Angron will just snap and he will grab Karn and he'll throw him across the room or he'll pick him up and he'll break his like arm or something and uh, Karn knows that if he shows weakness at any time then he's gonna snap his neck like everybody else and uh, it's just the way that Karn is able to talk him down and to get him to come out of the of the cargo hold and to to accept leadership over the Legion. Very interesting story. Had a good time reading it. Also it's nice to hear Karn talking and actually reasoning and being uh, you know a reasonable kind of guy instead of a crazy chain axe wielding lunatic that he becomes in 40k. So nice 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 introduction. It's it's great to read more about Angron and this is the first time really where we get to hear about him in the Horus Heresy series. So it was I, I thought it was a pretty cool story. All in all, great little read. Each story is short enough that it'll hold your attention for maybe a, an hour or so. You don't have to worry about digging through a whole novel where uh, you might not care for one of the characters, the main character, or the story with a lot of the other stories. It was uh, nice to see a novel that was broken up into an anthology of a bunch of different stories. Sorry, my voice is kind of uh, groggy. I'm trying to fight off a cold, but I highly recommend that if this some sounds like something you might be interested in, pre-heresy, heresy era kind of stories, really, really cool. I think there's only one story Oops, my doggy. There's only one real story that deals with the fact that Horus has betrayed the Emperor, and that's Blood Games. I think all of the other ones is set either right before the Heresy, or even a little bit before. I can't remember if the voice was or not, but everyone... All these other ones seem to be like The Last Church takes place at the end of the Unification Wars, um, after the Shea happens, right after Angron is reunited with the Emperor, so... Yeah, weird, it jumps around in the story time, story time, storyline a lot, but yeah, what are you going to do? Anyways, thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video.